Well, welcome back to the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for August 1st, 2021, 2021. And yes, it is the first of the month, so get up and listen to this news. We've got a massive ton of Transformer news like every week. We've got some G.I. Joe news to talk about. Of course, a lot of stuff going on with G.I. Joe. Well, maybe not a lot. We even have a little bit of Ghostbuster news, which sort of makes a little bit of sense on why they're clearancing out the Classics line. And absolutely nothing going on with Star Wars, but I have a few things to say about the Star Wars line at the end of this video, so stay tuned and get all this information coming up. So I'm going to start out talking about a few cool things I found at Show Z. The McFans Toys MS-27A Poisonous Fog Octane. This figure is actually just a repaint of their previous version of Poison. And I never bought it and I was thinking, why have I not picked this Triple Changer up yet? And now this shows up. So I'm in on this one because it is a more improved version with new paintings and new head sculpt release date in September of 2021. It's going to be $40 right around there, and I think you can get the original one a little bit cheaper. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this. And McFans Toys does good work on their own. Josie also has the Takara Tomy Masterpiece MP53 Crosscut up for pre-order. Now this is going to be $3 down. Release date still unknown. And why would somebody want this figure? Well, if you have your X Transbots version already for for your skids, you might want this guy or get the Takara Tomy Crosscut. But I really think supporting Takara when they're doing this and they're putting out figures for 90 bucks, which is way lower than they were doing in the past, that's something worthwhile. Shozy also has the Zero One Studio Pumpkin P01. For whatever reason, they call it the 2010 Universal Dominator version. And I want to say that I'm absolutely in love with the orange coloring on this. I don't really care for the dark lower legs. I'm okay with the gray areas in the chest and the pelvis area. But I kind of like everything about the first release except the orange. And I absolutely love the orange on this. But it's only $300 when the first release was selling for $400 at retailers and secondary market going wild. So not a bad price in either mode. I think it's a little too small for planet mode and it's a little too small in bot mode, but it looks really good in the bot mode. And yes, shows he has the Blitzway Voltron. I made a whole video about that Friday. Watch that video for my opinion on this figure. Uh, which is very high, and the comparisons to all other Voltrons ever made, for the most part, that are similar to this. And I want to say two things real fast. Number one, I want to say that this is 13.89 uh, inches tall, according to Show Z, and other places say it's almost 15 inches. I really think some give the height to the head, some give the height to the wings, and so there will be variation in that but I really can't wait to get it in hand to compare it to everything and see how tall it really is. The other thing about this thing is the price of $700 is massive. It's a tough pill to swallow, and not everybody is that into Voltron. I mean, a lot of people have their toe into Voltron collecting and not deep into it, but I can tell you right now that for me personally, I'll probably buy this, and I've got an SOC Voltron on the way for the reissue, and I probably won't buy another Voltron for two or three years. So if it costs 700 to get a great Voltron and I spend nothing on Voltron at all for two or three years, that's fine with me. But if you pre-order this thing for Show Z, it's been canceled. You got to re-pre-order it and pay 70 down. All right, so Show Z also has pre-orders for Nightbird. And let me just tell you real quick, I'm going to get into talking about these new pictures that Takara put out for Nightbird. And I was a little taken by surprise at first and now it makes sense and now i really like this figure and i'm bored with it three dollars down i show z but i do want to say this figure is getting its own number mp55 this figure looks amazing and there are enough differences paint app differences and the flaws that we had with the original rc are rc flaws 
and I think this will fit Nightbird a whole lot better. Here's the alt mode. I think the alt mode looks great and it fits it really well. And the paint apps look amazing. And yes, I'm not big on the whole sword thing on the sides. It's a thing that they do. We're going to see the accessories in a bit. But I do want to talk that I am done with Amazon Japan for ordering Takara Tomy product because of the return process being terrible. And now they tax me. So anyway, I'm in on this with Shozi and I'm in on this figure because it's awesome. And this is not just a slight repaint of RC. Look at the inclusion of all these weapons and accessories and all this stuff that did not come with RC. Huh, <laughs> lightsabers. They look good. This is a ton of stuff. An extra O O O O face. You got some ninja throwing stars. Really did capture the essence of this character. And I love what Takara did with this. So we've got another another new company coming around. It's not a new company. It is a rehash of another company. Robot Hero RH02 Airwolf is making a Springer, but this is very simply open and play Big Spring. When I first saw it, I was like, wow, open and play Big Spring is back. And wait, what's this new name? This has a more premium paint finish to it. It has a better improved face. There might even be more that's improved that I don't know, but I think it looks pretty good. And I never hated on Open and Play Big Spring in the first place. I wanted to see more of Open and Play Big Spring. I still have my Open and Play Big Spring Springer, but I really want to see this company do more stuff going forward. Here it looks in the car mode that looks good. You can see the glistening, which the original one was a very matte finish, did not have paint to it, did not have a sheen to it like this does. So I like this. And then here we go with the helicopter mode with, again, a better sheen. And then a, a, it collapses in the windshield from the auto mode to the helicopter mode. And I think this figure nails all three modes better than any other Springer, but people hate on it for whatever reason. I do want to point out their promotional art shows them with the official version of Takara RC, and that's curious. They're using the Takara RC, maybe trying to leverage the big dog in this game. And and look at look at the crest on the head. It's it's yellow. He's got the yellow crest on the head. But I really I really hope X Transbots does okay with theirs. X Transbots has come out with an official statement saying that they have identified a flaw or an issue with the production of their Virtus, which is the one I've been saying for now almost three years will be the best Springer. And they have held up the release date. They don't know when it's going to come out yet again. But I want a good figure. They need to deliver. If they're the very, very last to the market, they need to be the best. And we don't want a reissue of Locke. We don't want another cup situation where we have a bunch of broken figures sent out to customers. And guess what? The lock figure still isn't back out. The reissue, the good version, hasn't come out yet. So we've got another company, Mech Alliance SX02 Soundwave with Ravage, coming in stock at Show Z for 140 and it is made of plastic and die cast. This is a true masterpiece of the Bumblebee movie version of Soundwave. I love Soundwave. I love Ravage. This looks good. It's tempting to me. I don't know if I'm going to get it, but it's 10.63 inches tall. And it is going to be heavy, <laughs> made of die cast. It looks really good, but it also has an alt mode. Here is the alt mode with this guy, and I'm starting to have that fall of Cybertron feel from the video game. The video game fall of Cybertron is the best Transformers video game I have ever played, and it's amazing. And so I can understand kind of copying those designs and kind of going for that, because we did not see that in the four minute opening to Bumblebee movie, but we may see it in the upcoming movie, who knows? So we've got a pictures of a masterpiece cliff jumper prototype 
And I gotta say that it's it's green because that's the 3D printed stuff they had or whatever they used for the injection molding maybe. This is a truly redone version of the original mold, which was Bumblebee. And to go cliff jumper, it's way different. Now I'm not shocked at all. I'm I'm only shocked it took them this long, but it looks pretty good. It looks like they tried to fix the feet. It looks like they tried to do things a little bit different. But let's look at this Digi Bash because here's the thing. Fans Toys is putting theirs out when Takara is putting theirs out and Fans Toys apparently trumps Takara like massively trumps Takara and Fans Toys usually backs down they usually step back so will the parkour not come out will they put it off till 2030 who knows but this might be a problem for us getting the Fans Toys version but I'll support Takara. I just want to see it, get it in hand, and mess with it, and compare it to the fans toys. So KFC is coming out with the CST-14 Rhino Horn version 2.0. And I've got to tell you that this is a vast improvement from their first one. Now I thought their first one was okay. I'm happy to have it paid like 15 bucks for it but the horn breaks off almost instantly you have to use that with extreme caution but the overall design looks better but it really sucks even looking at this if you can't see what the 1.0 looked like so that's why I've got it in there and I hope you uh, appreciate that and maybe this will be better than fan toys who knows Mike, why are you talking about fans toys with KFC? Well, X Transbots and fans toys are the biggest rivals in the third party. We all know that. There's a massive rivalry. And they know something that we don't. Keith knows something with Keith's Fantasy Club, KFC, that we do not know. And we do not know that well, fans toys is working on putting out their acoustic wave. They're working on a blaster. Takara is working on a blaster that nobody really knows about. And these tapes are going to precede all of that and so it's smart business to be first to market and here we go so on the left you see the old version 1.0 of steel jaw and on the right you see what's the 2.0 from kfc and i have not seen kfc do 2.0s yet so this is something new x transbots really isn't into the 2.0 market Fans Toys is, is real comfortable with it. So here we go. I think it's a massive improvement. I think it looks really, really good. It's amazing. And I'm happy. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to fit in, like, say, your G1 version. If you pull your G1 blaster out, will it fit in there? But it looks really good, and I'm excited for these. So I'm going to slide through some Dr. Wu stuff, the DWE08 Starfear. Their Starscream, it looks really good. Here it is compared to their their Sound Master that's coming out, the 07. And I think they're trying to develop their own scale. The Super Micro Legends that are way smaller than Legends, way smaller than anything else, but really look good with Titan class figures or maybe even combiners and all that stuff. So that's what they're doing there. Here we go with a blaster next to it. So sound master and that looks good it's a little bit short and stumpy in my opinion they're not as sleek as they'd be if they were taller but you're dealing with like two inches or an inch and a half or something real small here's sea spray drift we'll see more in a bit but it looks pretty good all this seems to be 3d printed you see the lines in it and that's where they're going and then here it is next to sky glider or their power glide and, and next to their beachcomber so there's a lot going on with this company dr Wu. so dr Wu's putting out an upgrade kit to optimus prime i think they're doing new arms new legs new everything to the npm optimus prime for the bumblebee optimus prime and this is strange because they're really going hard on this masterpiece prime and here's what it looks like in the bot mode and 
they have done so much with this. It looks so much better than what Takara did. So, are they better than Takara? Is this company better than Takara? Or do they do they need like some sort of a base mold to start from to make a masterpiece figure? So I don't know Doctor Wu masterpiece figures, upgrade kits, and these little bitty add-ons, these little bitty figures. But do they really have the ability to design from scratch a masterpiece figure? I'd love to see that. But what you see here is them trumping Takara with their own design. So we've got this new premium collectible studio G1 Grimlock transformation sequence diorama. This is something new to the diorama scene, or maybe I just missed the whole category of transformations. Starts from the dino mode, and then the clear part is the transformation like in between, and then the bot mode up top. Really cool, really interesting, and I think this is definitely for statue collectors. And it really brings about something that you would see in statues. Something that is a moment in time. This actually shows a few moments in time before, during, and after the transformation. I love the idea, and if you lit it properly, it would look amazing. So getting into the next bit of news, Super 7 already announced our Wave 1 version of figures, and we got the Prime, the Starscream, and some Insecticon. But Wave 2 has just been announced, so let's talk about that. So they've got Grimlock, Trax, Megatron, and Bludgeon. And they all come with a bunch of stuff. Now, I gotta say, looking at all this, the Wave 2 of these $55 figures is interesting to say the least, but one of the things is Grimlock is Dinobot mode. So if you want Grimlock in bot mode, you can't get it. So that's, you're kind of stuck. And will you get the rest of the Dinobots? Maybe not. Trax, Trax looks pretty good. Trax might be the best version of Trax ever made and so maybe for 55 bucks you put that on your masterpiece shelf megatron looks a little bit blocky but he should look blocky so i don't know i think the jury's still out on this and the bludgeon to me personally is not something that i'm in for so i'm on the fence on all of these good thing that super 7 gives you time to make your mind up because they're not going to like say, you got to order it in two days or 12 minutes. You've got a few months, maybe six months, to figure it out. So we got Flames Toys putting out pictures of the Kurakari Cyclonus. And it looks pretty interesting. I know that we got sort of a samurai mode with the Fans Toys version of Cyclonus. So this doesn't surprise me at all. And it's kind of interesting. And it's going to be the a, a different version RC for Flames, Flames Toys RC is a model kit. Looks great. I gotta say, this might be the best RC out there. I hope it's painted. I don't want to paint it myself. But I'm going to probably be in on this because RC is a really hard character to capture just like this. Also, their Jazz, very stylized version of Jazz, still looks great. When you look at this, you know it's Jazz. So I gotta say, some of the stylized versions, you look at it, you don't know it's the character, but you know this is Jazz with an extreme pelvic thrust. We got pictures of Dream Star Toys. Dream Star Toys is making a stylized superior hunt and they're moving very fast and they're putting out pictures of, well, actual product, not just renders. And I have a feeling theirs will be done before Fans Toys Getting into it, it still looks great. Uh, it looks great as a stylized version of Superion. Superion is personally my favorite combiner, so I've got a soft spot for it. Even though I'm not really in on the set yet, I might be. And I have a feeling that they're moving fast and they will do a box set. That's a personal gut feeling, and a box set should be cheaper, and I'll probably be on it then. But it looks amazing. Alt mode looks great. I love this set so far from what I've seen. And it's going to gonna be a very high quality set from what the details show. And I look forward to seeing the first review on this. Getting into Legends news, I'm a little disappointed. 
that I bought the second version of Megatron from Magic Square, not the first, or the third. The third looks amazing. They, Magic Square knows how to paint a figure, they just choose not to. This thing looks great. It's the toy version, very shiny metallic version of Megatron, what I think of when I look at Megatron, and just phenomenal. Just looks amazing. Here he is in the alt mode, and the alt mode looks great also. I have this figure, so it's not a shocker. It's not a surprise. But I'm a little bit frustrated with the fact that I already have one that is substandard to this. Those squiggly wiggly lines and everything that you add to it to make it look more toy-esque is stickers you apply, from what I understand. My understanding of this figure is you apply those stickers. So it's a great figure. I look forward to it. I'll probably buy it. I don't know what I'll do with the other one, but I'm excited for this. Please, please give me a highly shiny painted version of your Shockwave. So this is where I struggle to keep pictures straight, I'll admit. But this looks like the New Age version of the Mixmaster, the other leg. So we got the legs coming out here, and there's the packaging shot. We've got them in their bot modes, and I think they look pretty good. It's interesting how both these companies, Magic Square and New Age, battling it out. Who's going to be the best? And then here we go with the alt mode, or more or less the combined mode. The alt mode moving into the combined mode. And I think that's what everybody cares about the most, is the combined mode. It looks interesting. I think New Age is going to be a slimmer look, and Magic Square is going to be a thicker look, but... In the end, I want to see them both compared side by side. It's strange that within days, maybe even minutes, that Magic Square shows theirs, the exact same characters and their versions, and they look a little bit different. So, here they are with Magic Square, and I think all the work they put into bot mode and alt mode, but for me personally, I care about combined mode, and I really think by mode Magic Square will win. In the end, Magic Square is gonna win the combined mode and it looks amazing, but both sets look great. There's really not a loser in the situation. There's just, what do you prefer? Getting into some mainline stuff, some really good mainline stuff here going on and this uh, robot uh, Autobot Arc upgrade kit from the TF Upgrader collectibles. This fills a major gap in the figure. I don't have the figure yet, but pictures show a major gap and has a lot of little pieces to add on to make it better. Here we go with the add-on kit added on. You see little guns in place, the massive side fillers, which will be leg fillers. It's coming up. But it looks great, and it accentuates the entire figure, especially in alt mode. But here in bot mode, you don't have giant gap syndrome. I don't know how much it'll be, but TF Upgrader on Facebook will be selling these soon. And when I get mine in hand, I'll probably need to fill my gaps with their kit. So if you see a lot of these Transformer news sites talk about release roundups and what's coming out or what has been spotted in the wild, Rodimus Prime spotted in the wild, Buzzworthy 4-pack, which at first glance looks like it's kind of silly, but deeper look, it is actually a really good set and I will get this if I see it at Target. Target exclusive. And then these these two packs, these four new figures coming out for the Buzzworthy line, and the Buzzworthy Cybertronian version, all that stuff is starting to show up. What does this mean? Why is it important? We've had a drought of new stuff at retail for almost a month. If not two months, it's starting to show up, meaning that the resets are happening and we're getting into the holiday season and the good stuff is about to start showing up. But, if it didn't hit retail already in your area, they have moved on. You might need to go online if you missed something. 
We're seeing sightings of the Cybertrome, Optimus Prime, and Megatron for the Super 7 Reactions figures. Here's the thing. These figures have been put out as the exact same mold multiple times, different paint schemes, and I have to say these look the best. Now I bought the original ones and I was happy, but it's starting to make you wear on you if they keep making them again with new paint schemes, new paint jobs, and not new figures and characters. I'm a little frustrated with this, but I, on the other hand, kind of want them. But this is one of those things that's a very niche market, and you might destroy what little bit of niche market collectors you have that actually buy into this. So we got some in-hand images of the Transformers Generation Shattered Glass Megatron and it's touted as a triple changer here. It looks interesting, it's different. Shattered Glass, so uh, Megatron as a good guy with a bad guy emblem, whatever. Here we go with the tank mode and it looks exactly like you expect from this mold for a tank mode. And we also get an airplane mode, so here we go with the airplane mode makes me wonder can you pull off the airplane mode with all the other versions quite possibly so i'm really looking forward to the sharkticon so new pictures show up for sharkticon he's a little shorter than alicon but he looks great i, I think this looks absolutely amazing look right next to him in their alt mode this is what you expect from a shark to con i got a picture coming up here in a bit that explains a little bit more here he is next to their legends version and he's so much bigger well he's bigger like the cyberverse bigger version here he is from the back and cleans up really well i think he looks really good from the back compared to what we got before and this picture shows there's not too many versions of Sharkticon that could be made. If they made eight different versions, I guess, you could buy one of all eight and have a really interesting Sharkticon display. So Fun B Studios is coming out with the comic effect parts for Transformers. This is really interesting. You've got a bunch of different sayings that more or less just clip into the five millimeter ports in the back and it feels like you're on the old Batman cartoon or the TV show, or you're in a comic book, or whatever, and you say, foom, or wham, or yes. Really interesting take. Something I've never seen before. Something never done before. Kind of fun. Again, we got more pictures of Hasbro's version of Rekkar. And the more pictures I see, the more excited I get, it looks really good. Here he is next to Hot Rod, and we saw him riding Hot Rod last week. We won't see him riding Hot Rod again this week. But a size comparison, side by side, it's going to be hard to only buy one Rekkar when you see him on the shelf. And then they're going to retool him into, is it Junkyard? Down the road. Who knows how many iterations they're going to make, but it looks amazing. It looks like a lot of fun. Great figure, great junkie on scene. So Transformers 30th anniversary, 35th anniversary, coming to the US theaters, and it's upcoming for two showings. There's gonna be one on September 26th at noon and 28th at 7 p.m. So the thing about this is we've seen them in theaters before. We saw it in 1986, we saw it a few years back, and now we're seeing it again. Watching the movie in the theater is something special. Well, during a time, theaters are struggling to even stay open, but it's pretty exciting that we're gonna see it on the big screen again. TFCon Baltimore in October is gonna feature Bob Budiansky, the creator of the G1 Transformers. This is pretty interesting that they're actually going to have him as a guest. That's amazing. That's impressive. He has lots of stories to tell. I've seen some videos with him in it telling his stories. 
and basically how he created some characters and stuff is pretty exciting, pretty interesting. Look forward to see what he has to say. So we're starting to see some pictures show up of the Ghostbusters Afterlife Hasbro Plasma Series action figures and it's mixed results I guess you could say. First off we don't have Egon because Egon is gone sadly rest in peace but we have the new cast the old geezer cast made into action figure form in the Plasma Series line. There is also what they call Sentinel Terror Dog. So I don't know what's up with that figure. But then you get the new cast, the, the children. So this is a bit of a different take on the Plasma series of Ghostbusters. And there's some stuff going on here with all the kids, the female kids, with some sort of a rolling version of a trap, the ghost trap kind of interesting I really think at the end of the day everybody's gonna want to track down the original plasma series that sort of mirrored the first movie we're also getting the first release of plasma series figures with the ecto stuff going on glow in the dark it's interesting exciting because they all get their plasma streams now they did not do that the first go around but the more oddball, interesting thing I found, it's on eBay. Maybe they made these 10 years ago. Maybe they're coming out now. But these Ghostbusters fright feature kind of ghosts, the fright feature ghosts with cartoony looking figures. So I don't know anything about this. I saw it on eBay and it was like new, brand new kind of stuff. I don't know, but it's weird, it's strange. And I figure I show the picture. A little bit of G.I. Joe news this week. So if you pre-ordered in the G.I. Joe June, you're getting your Baroness now or soon. Same thing with the Viper. And it's pretty exciting that they let these things get reissued so fans can have them. Now, Baroness is still up for pre-order on Target.com for now. No telling how much longer she'll be there. But it's pretty exciting. You could sort of get what you want. So I actually watch Star Wars YouTubers. And they literally scratch and scrape to make up content on a daily basis. Or, I don't know, every three days basis to just make it up. But the reality is nothing at all happened in the past seven days for Star Wars. So I will give you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that Ollie's has a $6 Bespin Luke Skywalker for the Vintage Collection on sale for 6 bucks. If you go into your Ollie's, you might find one, but it might be battered and beaten. I bought a couple just because they're there, and I have to go through my Vintage Collection because there's now three or 400 figures in my Vintage Collection. And figure out which ones I still need. So we've got some carbonized versions of Target exclusive Mandalorian figures. And this one here, they call it Paz Vizla. It's up for pre-order right now at Target.com. Go there and get it for like $33. The Scout Trooper is like $27 and the Shore Trooper is $27 and it's gold. If you want those figures, they're exclusives that you can pre-order right now and get them, but they've kind of been beat to death at this point. One of my favorite places to get Star Wars news and Star Wars information is Jedi Temple Archives. And before that was Sir Steve's Star Wars action figure review, whatever. That doesn't exist anymore but Jedi Temple Archives does. They have an article talking about should they have made these new figures from the first original Clone War shorts into their animated style like they did with droids, like they did with Ewoks. And they offered up sort of a mock-up of what these should have looked like. I agree with them. This is what those figures 
should have looked like and not been more vintage collection. Because they're not vintage, well, I guess they are vintage collection. They did not alter the figures to make them look cartoon. So there's a lot of caveats to this. But I want to say most Star Wars sites and YouTubers are just kind of making up content. So what do you think about this week's weekly news review? What else is going on out there that's awesome in, well, all the toy community? Let me know. What did I miss? Like, subscribe. Can you hear me, Hanger? Out.